Hello everyone, we're back on the desktop and today I thought I would cover a basic React on Rails tutorial. This is going to have React inside of a Rails application, so this one is not API based. There's other videos on the channel that cover using React with an API. This one's just going to use import maps. One distinction I want to make between the two approaches is because import maps isn't compiled, feel free to fact check me in the comments, but I believe that means you can't use JSX with import maps. So this is gonna let you do some non-compiled JavaScript React, which is gonna be a little bit different, a lot different than what you're used to, but we'll walk through it real quick. So the first thing we need to do is with a completely blank application, we're just gonna generate a controller. So we have a page. So we're gonna say Rails G controller, pages, and then home. That'll generate our controller. We can then go ahead and generate our stimulus controller. So say Rails G stimulus, and I'm just gonna call it, I don't know, React. So we're just gonna have a React stimulus controller. So this will just create it inside of app JavaScript controllers, React controller. So we have that. We can then come over to our VS code or whatever your editor of choice is, and we need to come into our routes. I'm gonna hit Control P and type routes. You can also just go into config and routes.rb. I'm gonna hit Control B to hide the side panel. I'm gonna change this git to a root and the slash to a hash. So we're just setting the root of the application to the page's homepage. And I'll go ahead and type Rails S to start the server uh, because we're pretty much done here. And here's our blank homepage. I'm gonna open up the side panel again, go into app, oops, app views, pages, and home. Control B. And we're just gonna get rid of the entire homepage. Instead, what we'll do is we'll just create a div. I'm going to say this has a ID of root. So there's our root. And we'll give this a data-controller equal to React. So this is the name of our stimulus controller. And remember, we called it React, so we're just putting the React in here. If you'd like to use a Ruby template instead, just go ahead and do like a content tag. Give this a type of div, an ID equal to uh, root and you can give it some data, and then you're gonna to wanna to put inside of braces a controller. I'll go ahead and move this down the line, a controller, which is just gonna be React. Once you're done with that, you can then bring the brace down here, put the parentheses and save this. Go ahead and refresh the page. And you can see here we have this weird little string of stuff, and the reason is your div needs to have some actual content. So normally you can just put like the word test in here, and it'll just give you an empty div with the word test or we can just leave it as the empty string, and then we'll just have a empty div there. So that works. These are, both do the same thing. It's ultimately up to you what you'd like to use. I'll just get rid of the first div and leave the content tag instead. We can then uh, close the routes actually. We'll open up the side panel and come into JavaScript, and we're gonna wanna come into our controllers and our React controller. I'll hit Control B again. Now we need to import React. Well, I guess we can connect this first. So to connect the stimulus controller, we just come into the home page. We have the controller right here, but we don't have a way to check if this is working. So we'll just go ahead and do a console.log and we'll say uh, connected. Connected to React controller even. We can then refresh and that'll show up in our console. So let's go ahead and let's add React into our application. To do this, we're gonna stop the server, hit Control L, F11 to full screen. And then we're gonna run a bin slash I and then hit tab, that'll open up your import map. You then want to pin and the commands are pin or unpin. Pin will install it like npm install and unpin will, un unpin will uninstall it. So we're gonna pin React, go ahead and run that and you'll see it just pins the React string to these, this location right here. You can then do another bin import map to pin React, but we're also gonna pin React-DOM, and that'll add a few different imports here, one of which is React itself, one is the scheduler, one is process. We can go ahead and hit Rails S, and then F11. We can come over to the side panel, come down to config and import map, and if we look in here, we'll see all of the stuff we just imported. You'll also see that RuboCop is upset with me. So we have our React, React DOM, Process, and Scheduler here. And if you ever want to get rid of these, you just remove them from here. The, uh, you can also unpin them. The thing to note is if you have to change the versions, you can also do it in here just by changing whatever the URL is that it's being pinned to. But okay, this is now working. Let's go ahead and let's see if we can actually get React in here. To do this, we're gonna to have to import React. 
from React. We're also going to have to import React capital D-O-M from React hyphen DOM. Those two will give us access to React. Now we want to do some setup. Now, because this is a uh, no JSX application, it's gonna let you use React pretty much wherever you want to. You just have to use a specific syntax. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna be using the React DOM render. And here is a URL for you to check out. It's react.js. or reactjs.org slash docs slash react dash without dash jsx.html. I'll have a link to this in the video description. And this sort of explains the difference between using JSX where you have like, in, here, in this case it's classes uh, and not using it where you have the um, React DOM call where you have to actually call create element everywhere. So, okay, that is that taken care of. And the reason why I have this is because there is actually a short form that you can use that they suggest where you just make a variable called E and set it equal to react.createElement. I'm gonna comment this out real quick so you can see what the difference is. Basically down here, we need to do a const root equals, and remember the root is in our home application or in our home page, we have the root ID. So we're gonna grab that. So we're just gonna say this is the react dom dot create root. And then we need to grab the document dot get element by ID for the root. You could also bind this with your stimulus if that's something that you're into. But uh, in this case, I'm just gonna grab it like this. And then we can do a root dot render. And then you have your react dot create app. Now this react.create app is not really what we're looking for, um, but instead you would have something like create a, uh, I don't know, some kind of string, oops, some kind of string. And then after that you would pass in the root element as well. With having the const E here, what you can instead do is you can do something like E and then just the name of your component and then the root. So in this case, I'm going to create a hello world component. So I'm just going to do it like that, which means I have to import it. So I'm going to say import hello world from, and then this is going to come from a components directory. So let's come over to our Explorer inside of JavaScript. We're going to right click new folder components, and then inside of the components folder, new file, hello world.js. Inside of here, uh, you can just type RFCE if you'd like to, and that'll give you a basic React setup. We do need to refactor this a bit, but then we can come in here and we can import hello world. We have our root next to it, and we just need to do a import relative to that. So we'll just go ahead and go into component slash hello world. There's cleaner ways to import this, uh, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. In this case, I'm really just leaving it in the components directory. So let's come into the hello world and let's refactor this because again, we can't use JSX. So if we try to leave this div in here, we'll get error after error where it says, uh, fail to register uh, controller, react, unexpected token, and then the uh, less than symbol. Less than symbol comes from this div. You can't have any of your angle brackets here. So instead what you have to do is right up top here, we'll just do another const E equals react dot create element. And then we will return E, and then we can return a H1 with a null, and then a hello world. We can then go ahead and save this come over here and refresh. And now we have our hello world displaying on the page. You can of course use this to daisy chain if you'd like to have multiple elements. And I think that's even shown, maybe not in here, but there are other tutorials online where you can just search for React without JSX tutorial. And there's even some YouTube tutorials that cover this as well as some blogs. And the basic idea is you can sort of swing these together to create multiple elements that allow you to create something similar to having like a, maybe a div with a H1 inside of it. So something like this would then be a E where you create the uh, div and then it would be a null and then you would have a E where you have the H1 for hello world, something like that. Then we get rid of this test up here and we'll see if this works. 
and it's the same result. But if we click on this, you'll see this is inside of a div itself. So you can chain these together to create more complex stuff, but you're gonna be kind of limited. Um, you can of course do some basic stuff, like if you wanna use a use uh, effect, you can do that. And then in here, you can do something like console log for hello world, we'll refresh, and then that's our use effect working. You can also do a uh, const, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, count, set count and that'll give you your use state. And then you just have to actually use the use state. And then we can come in here and get rid of the react if you'd like to. Again, ultimately it's gonna be up to you however you'd like to do this. It's, it's really just dependent on how you wanna set this up. But yeah, so I thought this would be helpful because I know there's people that wanna use react but they don't wanna have to go through all the setup of switching over to Webpacker for compiled stuff. So this is helpful. Um, and I've even managed to get stuff like a basic emoji picker working with uh, React this way and integrating it with, with tricks. So it is useful. It's just also really limited because it doesn't have the, the JSX component, right? And that's what a lot of us are familiar with when we actually think of React is the, 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 the reactiveness of having JF, JSX. But you can use this for quite a few things. So I thought it'd be helpful to cover. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you'd like to see a Webpacker version with Rails 7, I can definitely cover that or like Vite or something. Uh, just something where we, I guess, set up React with JSX, right? And have compilation steps. But yeah, just let me know if you want to see that in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video.